Your ticker news. Well, is democracy in crisis? It's a big question and one that's become hard to grapple with in recent years. We've seen Donald Trump become the first former US president to be criminally charged. He's pleading not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records. Meanwhile, the war in Ukraine is challenging the very notion of democracy like never before. So let's unpack this big question and bring in Dan McMillan from Save Democracy in America. Dan, it's great to see you. I want to start by asking who poses a bigger threat to US democracy? Is it Vladimir Putin or Donald Trump? Well, I'm going to to disappoint you by saying that it's neither. I think the biggest threat to American democracy is something that you won't hear about uh, in, in the headlines, in the American media coverage, but has been going on for decades, and that is um, that our election campaigns are far more expensive than any other, any other first world country. And in effect, our government is for sale to high dollar campaign donors to a tiny minority of Americans who can pay the vast sums that are needed uh, to fund these campaigns, for example, to get into the upper house of our national legislature, the Senate, campaigns are typically 20 or 30 million, $40 million. Uh, that money doesn't come from the American people, from voters like myself and, uh, and the people around me. And that is, I think the, you need to understand that because that is the long-term structural problem that explains why there is now so little trust that Americans have in our government and in our institutions, so that it is possible for tens of millions of Americans to feel that the election was stolen, uh, for Democrats and Republicans to have so little trust in each other, and for the anger between the two parties, which is stoked by politicians and media for their own purposes, has escalated to a level that that is clearly dangerous. Okay, so democracy is this exclusive club in America. How do you change that? How do you unpack it to ensure that America's voices are being heard? The, uh, the best answer I've seen is, is wonderfully straightforward and, and given that our biggest problem is that only major campaign donors still have influence in Washington, let's make ourselves the donors. And this has been called democracy dollars. Uh, it's been tested at the city level in Seattle successfully since 2017. There is a whole string of efforts to introduce it for municipal and also state level elections across the country. My organization, our focus is to make this happen for federal elections. So it's a, it's not a centralized movement, but it is a kind of movement that is gathering steam. And the way it would work is simply this, that for every federal election, the government would give every registered voter an online account of campaign cash. You can't take the money out and spend it, but you go online and assign these democracy dollars to the candidate you want to support. And if you fund it at a robust level, you know, capable candidates can attract the kind of obscene sums of money that you need to be competitive and their opponents excuse for taking money from big pharma, big oil, and other special interests. So that's the concept that uh, I'm entirely devoted to. And this this idea is gaining support, as I see across the Mm. country. It is a great idea. I I absolutely love it. But how do you then stop these uh, political candidates who already have such a backing before the dollars are given out actually campaigning to get the support of the voters and get the dollars off smaller parties? Well, I mean, you you basically would, would set it up so that any candidate who wants to fund their campaign with democracy dollars has to accept limits on the donations Mm. that that they accept and on the amount of money that they raise from outside the system. And then any candidate who does not fund his or her campaign with the dollars is effectively making a statement to the voters, I'm not here to serve you. I'm here to be a stooge of corporate interest because that's what I like. And in fact, in Seattle in 2018, you know, the billionaire Jeff Bezos who owns Amazon tried to purchase a city council that was to his liking by spending one and a half million dollars on seven city council races, which was unprecedented. And it totally backfired. The public was outraged, the media were outraged, and his candidates went down to defeat. So I think we, we're optimistic that the American people, once they understand the importance of money, 
will punish at the polls politicians who take private money when there's so much money available from the democracy dollar system. It's a great system and maybe it does have legs. Uh, we'll have to speak to you over the next few years to see if it gets up. Dan McMillan, thank you for your time today. I like that very much. Thank you, Will. <laughs> and I'm William Howard. Thanks for your time. Stay with